Hi, this is our Forge blog for April 6, 2012. We hope everyone has a happy Easter. This, a lot of times on days like this, there's very low volatility. Uh, however, there was a non-farm payroll today, and thus there was high volatility. Normally on days like this, I don't trade, nor do I uh, even do a, a class or a Forge blog. But because of that volatility, um, I'm going to. Also, our tools did find some good trades even before the announcement, and you will see that in, in this blog video. We statistically compare every currency to every other one on multiple time frames using multiple tools. The dollar and yen are the two main pairs everyone trades. We have five different tools that make up this histogram. Three of them measure the direction the dollar is moving versus the yen, the euro, and all the rest. And two of them measure the intensity of direction. So anytime you see it red, it's weak, green, strong. And when it's at and above this 80 level, it has incredible momentum and momentum that's likely to continue. When you see extreme weakness followed by the counter trend wave having not much strength, it's likely to resume that weakness, which you can see it did for a couple hours. Underneath that, we have a daily trend, weekly trend, and monthly trend. I primarily, as an intraday trader that holds positions, you know, 10 minutes to up to three hours, primarily focus on the real time. I also care about the daily and the weekly. The monthly doesn't matter too much to me because it can take uh, five days to 10 strong days to change the monthly trend. So it's not very useful. But watching the dollar today, because the daily trend was up, somewhat just very lightly and the weekly trends pretty strong and the monthly trend strong you can still trade it but be aware that that downtrend could could end in, in reverse you know in the opposite direction which you can see here for about an hour and a half there was mostly strength then weakness the strength came back so it's not going to be a smooth ride down when the longer time frame trends are up uh, whereas with the euro if you see some weakness and it's blood red across the board you know, you can more safely and more high probability uh, take sells in the euro versus the strong pairs. In other words, today you would have wanted to sell the euro versus the pound when the strength of the yen came in later today and all the time frames are up. After 8.30, you want to uh, sell the euro um, yen. So we'll start with that one. Here's the euro yen. We're going to scroll back to around 8.30 when the news hit. And a lot of times, you know, most traders miss the first wave. When this has a counter trend move right here, you might look to sell it right here because of how weak it was. It fell from 14 all the way down to 93. You wait for another pullback up. And you might have even shorted here, lost six or seven pips, shorted again here at 14. It's kind of going sideways. Another chance to make 14 pips. It's going sideways, blood red across the board. Breaks down right here at 88. And you never know how far it's going to go down. Always draw your fibs. If it stalls at the fib target, get out. And it passed the first one, stalled the second one. I would have exited this at 60. But you can see that's a nice 30 pip win right there. Wait for a pull back up, go short, and make 10, 15 pips. And at that point, I probably would have been done for the day. Earlier today, the yen was extremely weak. It was one of the weaker ones and far weaker than the dollar. You can see the daily trend is extremely weak. And you'd want to trade that against the strongest one, the CAD, very, very strong. The New Zealand strong. So earlier today, between two and maybe six, when this one had some weakness, and uh, with the New Zealand all the way until the extreme strength here at 8:30, you'd want to sell. Or I'm sorry, you want to buy the CAD yen. So let's look at this one. Now, obviously, the yen became super ridiculously strong at 8:30. We all know that. But before that, you're looking to buy this above the hourly. You're looking to buy, and you can just simply. You know, when it finds support, the hourly and starts to go back up. You could get in here at 78, use your trailing stop. Very small four pip win. In here at 85, out uh, at 04. That's about a 20 pip win. And most of the time, currencies will go up to the upper containment bands if they're truly strong. This one ran into resistance at the previous day's high. You always should know as a trader, if you're really serious about trading, when economic news is going to come out. And we all knew that uh, it was coming out uh, past the 8 o'clock time frame. So if you were in the trade right here and it's having trouble going above the previous day's high, it's coming up to that time at 8.30 when the news came out, you know, you probably should be out of your trade. Uh, you know, most people wouldn't have taken that trade just simply because of when the news came out. Earlier today, again, the New Zealand was strong on all time frames. And anytime you see a lot of strength followed by almost no 
weakness and all the time frames are up, it's pretty much a no-brainer. So the New Zealand yen you are also looking to buy earlier today. And you can look at this. First of all, this is one of our Fibonacci uh, retracement areas that I do each night. So uh, when the currency is stuck inside that area right here, you really don't want to buy it until it breaks out. So you might have went long right here uh, at 24, and you get out right here at 40. You made 16 pips, and it's kind of going sideways. It's also, obviously, there's clearly selling up here at the previous day's high. That doesn't bode well uh, for a buy. If you bought this right here at 7, you can see it just went up from about 40 up to 49. It's kind of going sideways right here, and it hits your trailing stop really fast on the same bar uh, because the momentum immediately shifted. So you probably should have got out of that trade pretty much near break even. And you can see afterwards when the uh, economic news came out, the yen became one of the strongest currencies, and this thing fell like a rock, which is more reason to check forexfactory.com and many other economic calendars to know what's going on. Also notice this one, that the real-time trend was up. The weekly trend kind of mixed, just it's shifted slightly up, but the monthly trend was down. So when there's no clear longer-term direction, earlier today they were both down, and it's always good to see what's going on in the past. These new tools, which I'm going to release probably uh, early next week, trying to make them use a smaller memory footprint, uh, they're called Pivot Score Daily, Weekly, Monthly. And unlike our older Daily, Weekly, Monthly statistical tools, which only worked live when you brought it up on the chart, it would uh, start you know, accurately filling it in from you know, the point you brought it up forward. This one actually goes back and can plot you know, charts in the past. So you can see a currency like the New Zealand, which has a very strong daily trend that's up. The weekly and monthly trend, unfortunately, are still down. So you're not going to, you're less likely to get a big pip win when the real-time momentum's up and the longer-term weekly and monthly trend's down. That's just common sense. I, don't, I shouldn't even have to point that out, but you never know. I have traders that, you know, tell me they take trades and they don't understand this stuff for some reason and they lose money because of it. So trying to point out the obvious, hopefully, if, if you already understood that you're less likely to make a big win buying today, if the real-time trends up but the weekly and monthly trends down, then you're ahead of the game. You're probably going to do, uh, you're going to love our tools. I'm going to end uh, today's Forex blog by showing uh, buying the pound versus the euro. You know, it's the euro pound, so you want to actually sell the euro pound. This is not one that I leave running. Uh, very often, so I'm going to bring it up. EUR GDP, hit enter. And again, this is one that you want to look for sells on because the euro was weak and the pound was strong. You can see all the time frames are down. And one of the methods that we use is when the currency works its way back up to the hourly and can't get above it, right here it did, right here it did, it's very likely to go down. You might have shorted this when the bars went red at 51, and notice they came down to the previous day's low, a monthly pivot low right here, and it kind of ran out of steam. It didn't have off-the-charts momentum like some of the other currencies we saw. And as it's going sideways, you can see the weakness kind of fell. So it's pretty much a no-brainer to get out there. If that doesn't tell you to get out, our trailing stop right here did at 38. So you might have been short somewhere up at uh, 50, and you made 12 pips, which, you know, for the euro pound, that's good um, because you make pretty much double the pip value on this one. So it's equivalent to about a 24-pip move. Wait for a pullback. Counter trend signal right here. If you went short, you made a little bit short again right here when the trailing stop got hit, 46. And out here, that's a equivalent to about a 12 pip win. Uh, and again, the currency meter helps you find these ones, helps you pick the direction. Uh, and you might have, after this move up here, really stopped trading it because the momentum on the way up was uh, more than the previous weakness. Ideally, you want to see uh, a down move with incredible momentum at and above the 80 level for most of the bars. And then during the counter trend move, you want to see it more like this. That's a trend that's very likely to continue. Those are the ones you want to focus on. And last, to end this uh, video today, you want to also focus on currencies that meet those requirements and also have the most number of pips to the next support area if you're selling. If you're going to sell at 45 and uh, 38 is the next support area, uh, you know, you're looking at six or seven pips. Uh, if the next support area was 20 pips down, that would be a preferable choice to sell. It's basically like uh, driving on an empty road versus driving on uh, a gridlocked highway.
in you know maybe Los Angeles during rush hour, you you might take an hour to move one mile if you're lucky. I mean, I've lived in California before and I've I've driven a mile in one hour time frame. It's hard to even imagine, but it's true. Same thing with trading. You don't want to short a currency that has a support area right there. You're in kind of a busy traffic lane, and you're not going to your odds of having a positive outcome uh, go down.